Okay everybody, welcome to this lesson. I'm going to teach you how to create your very own bootloader that's able to accept keystrokes, okay, and print them back to you. This is pretty fantastic little exercise for beginner kernel developers. You're gonna love this. Follow the lesson exactly as shown and you'll have a working bootloader in no time. So let's start by installing NASM Assembler. You may have to do a sudo app update before this command. Okay, I've got NASM installed already. Next, we're gonna install QM, you guys, which is an emulator which will allow us to emulate our boot sector once it's completed. Next, we're just gonna check that we have those uh, objects, which we do, we have NASM. Let's check QMU. You can see it says a VAD option, which means we have it. So yeah, there's our emulator. You can see that it runs a little virtual machine, obviously because there's no hard disk attached, nothing happens, okay? Perfect, so now that we've done that, we can start writing our boot sector. Now this is gonna be very exciting. So follow along exactly as I do, and I will try to explain the best I can. But if you are really interested in kernel development, there's a video course in the description that you can find which will teach you how to build multitasking operating systems, okay? It's 30 hours long, it's massive, and it's beautiful. So if you do want to learn kernel development properly after this lesson, you can check the video description. Okay, so we're gonna begin now. So we're gonna start by saying bit 16. This is because we want to write 16-bit assembly code. Now, in case you don't know, assembly language is human-readable machine code, essentially, guys, okay? You pass it through an assembler and out pops the machine instructions, okay? And then they can be executed directly on the CPU. Why do we have to use 16 bits? Because all Intel and AMD processors start in a legacy state which is uh, basically the state of the 16-bit processors back in the 1980s. So your processor actually works like a 1980s processor until it's told to do so otherwise. Right, so that's why we have to write 16-bit code. Now by default, your BIOS chip will load your boot sector in this address. So we wanna set the origin to 0x7c00. This will mean that any code that we write in assembly will be generated as if it was loaded at this address, because it will be. Next, we're gonna create a start label. And obviously, don't worry if you don't understand the assembly language, okay? Because you can learn that in the video description as well. It's part of the kernel course, okay? Right, so we're gonna clear the interrupts. That's the first thing we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna XOR the AX register, okay, with AX which you basically set it to zero, okay? Now registers, you can think of like variables, but they're built into your processor and their names cannot change, okay? Right, so here we're gonna say move the AX register into the data segment. Now the data segment is used whenever you're accessing memory in real mode. We're in real mode at the moment. This is the 16-bit legacy mode I was talking about. And essentially what happens is, say you're accessing a label, yeah? The address is computed as the data segment multiplied by 16 plus the offset, okay? So that's why the data segment is so important. So we're setting it to zero because we're offsetting the addresses in our program at this origin. So essentially what's going to happen is it's going to say zero multiply 16 equals zero and then plus 0x7c00 plus relative offset. So that's why we set it to, to uh, zero in this particular case. Where is it set to zero? The XOR, guys. If you XOR a value by itself, it becomes zero, okay? Why do we XOR instead of just do a move instruction? Because the XOR instruction is faster. All right, nice, let's continue. So next we'll set the extra segment, the stack segment, and the stack pointer. So we're gonna set the stack pointer to 0x7c00, and in case you don't know, in your process, you have a stack, okay? You point it to an address, and if you push to the stack, it grows downwards, okay? If you pop, it grows upwards, okay? So we're gonna re-enable interrupts now, because now that we've finished modifying the stack, it's safe to do so. All right, so next we're gonna say, move SI message, or welcome, I should say. We're gonna have a welcome message, guys, okay? That's what we're gonna do here. And then we're gonna call print, which will be a label, which will be a print routine we're about to make, okay? So what this does, this loads the address of the welcome message, which we're about to create in a minute, 
into the SI register. And then we call the print, which will then print out that welcome message, okay? Let's create that little welcome message down here. We're gonna say welcome DB, I am the start of something great. The best OS in the world. Because you never know, one of you might turn your bootloader into the next Linux. Right. And we're going to put a new line as well, guys, okay? Like that. Perfect. And there's our null terminator. Nice. So let's create the actual print routine now. But before we do, we're just going to put an infinite jump here. Now, why are we putting an infinite jump here? Because in assembly language, the instructions grow downwards. If we don't put a jump here, it's going to try running this data as if it's a CPU instruction, you know, because this is not C or Java, guys, right? There's not much structure. So every instruction works entirely by itself, okay? Uh, like in C, if you made an if if you made an if statement, for example, that's going to generate several CPU instructions to make that happen. In assembly, what you write is what you get. Okay, so as soon as this call is done, we'll jump here forever. This this dollar means jump to self, so it's going to jump to line seventeen over and over again. And then that code down here or this data here will never get run. Okay, perfect. So let's make the print routine. We're going to have a print label now. We're going to say push a pop a return so just to let you know this instruction here push a will push all of the general purpose registers to the stack okay and remember what i said they're kind of like variables built into the cpu okay pop a will do the opposite it'll pop from the stack all of the registers so the idea is we're saving them so by the time we leave this print routine the registers or variables i should say uh, will still be equal to what they were when we entered this function okay this subroutine and the reason for this is because we don't want these registers here being changed by the print routine, okay? So by backing it up and then restoring it on line 22, we resolve that problem. Okay, so let's say dot P colon, and we're going to say lod SB, which will load the next byte from this welcome message, okay? It basically sets the AL register, you know, the variable, the CPU variable, to whatever SI is pointing to. You can see I've written it in a way that will be useful for C programmers. And then what it does, guys, it increments the SI by one byte. So if we loop on this, it'll go through this entire string. And then we can kind of compare to check if the AL register is zero, the, the CPU variable is zero. And if it is, we're done printing. You understand? Because zero is a null terminator. Cool. So what we next do, we do that test. So we say test AL AL. So what this will do, this will check if AL is zero. Okay. And then if it is, we will jump to done. So JZ means jump zero. Okay. So if, if the zero flag is set, we jump away. Okay. So done will be down here. So we'll jump from here to here. If, if the uh, null terminator is found, okay? If null terminator is found, then leave. Okay, perfect. Now, what if it's not a null terminator? Then we want to print it out to the screen. So how do we do that? Well, we say move ah 0 x 0 e Now, this is the print character command that is expected by the BIOS, okay? Because we'll talk with the BIOS to say that we want to print this character out. Okay, and then the BIOS will check for this command and it'll know that we want to print a single character. Okay, and then we're going to say init 0x10. And then we're going to say jump.p. Okay, so it comes in here, it loads a byte from the welcome message. Okay, it then sets the command to the print character command and invokes the BIOS. Okay, invoke BIOS. The BIOS will then see this command and know that you want to output a character to the screen. It'll output it to the screen and then it'll jump back here to line 29. And then line 29 will jump back up to the loop because this is a loop. Okay. This is a loop. We loop over and over this by here. Okay. And if you're having trouble, guys, I have put this in the video description a link to the source. Okay. 
which is designed to help you. So if you are struggling, you can check the source code directly. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, we want to fill up this entire binary, once it's assembled, of course, to 512 bytes, to 510 bytes. Now, how do we do that? Well, we say times 510 dash dollar dash dollar dollar db0. So this will, this will fill up to 510 bytes nulls unless there's already code there. Okay, so this stuff will not be overwritten. The, like the, the machine code equivalent of this code will not be overwritten. But anything else after that will be overwritten up to the 510th byte. So in other words, what this line is saying is, uh, make my bootloader binary 510 bytes. Okay, so if you have 510 bytes worth of machine code, great, there'll be no nulls. If you have 509 bytes of machine code, well, it's going to pad an extra zero at the end, okay? So finally, guys, the last two bytes need to be the boot signature, okay? So we're going to say DW0XAA55. And the boot signature is what the BIOS looks for to know that a piece of code is bootable. And it has to be exactly on the last two bytes of a sector, okay? And a sector in uh, kernel development is generally 512 bytes, okay, for hard disks. So each sector is 512 bytes. So sector one is 512 bytes. Sector two, 512 bytes. They're 512 byte chunks. That's why this whole file will be guaranteed to be 512 bytes, okay? Because we, 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 we guarantee it here that it's at least 510 bytes. And then we put on the final two bytes here, okay? And your bootloader cannot be bigger than 512 bytes, by the way. If it's bigger, you will have to load another sector from the disk, okay? So we're going to test this program now, and then if it works, which it will, we're then going to uh, create the ability to read from the keyboard. Hey, guys, so let's let's boot it then. So we're going to load up our terminal. We're going to say nasm-f bin. This means that we're assembling binary files, okay? So there will be no objects involved. Uh, we're going to say boot.asm. We're going to press enter. Now you should see a boot file. You see that boot file? This is raw binary now, okay? Uh, in fact, if you cat it, you'll see that this is the binary of our program, you see? So you can see here, this is the string. But this, all of this stuff that you can't see, this is it trying to convert it back into ASCII, this machine code, okay? Right then, you can use a hexadecimal editor if you want to see how that looks structurally. That's very fascinating. So once you've assembled the file, which we have, we then run our emulator. So we're going to say qmu-system, dash i386, that's HDA boot. Okay. Dot forward slash boot. We're going to press enter. And now you can see our string. Okay. This is a real bootloader. Okay. This is actually booting in this emulator. I am, I am the start of something great, the best OS in the world. All right. So how awesome is that? So now guys, let's make it so we can actually type things. How cool would that be? Right. So we use BIOS interrupt 0x16 for reading from the keyboard guys. Okay. So after we print this uh, actual message, we're going to call another function. And we're going to call it get key. Okay. And here we're going to say get key colon. And we're going to push a pop a return like we did last time. And we're going to say x or ahh. -A -H. So this will set ah register, i.e. the CPU variable, to zero. And then we're going to call in at ZX16, okay? Ask BIOS for next key. So ZX16 is responsible for the keyboard. Command zero means get key, okay? And after we return from this uh, interrupt call, the a AL register will be equal to the key pressed, okay? So we know from our print function that in its ZX10, to invoke for the video routines requires a command of 0x0e 0 e, and the character to print is in the AL register, okay? And obviously, lodsb will set the AL register. However, we don't need to set any AL register anymore because the interrupt 0x16 has set the AL register. So all we have to do to print out the next character uh, that was pressed is very simple. We just say move ah 0x0e zero zero e, Print character routine, okay? In its ZX10, 
And it's that simple because the AL register was already set. Now, if you wanted to print out a custom character, you could do something like that. That would print out E, yeah? But AL has been set by in ZX16, so we don't have to do anything else, okay? So I'm ready to test this now, and I think it's gonna work, okay? But this will only print one character that you press, and then it won't do anything else. So let's make it on a loop, yeah? We're gonna say GK loop, and then after we've printed it out, we're going to jump to, to GK loop. Now that'll be an infinite loop. We'll never leave, okay? So let's give it another try. So we can press the up arrow key to run the last commands. And we're going to run this one again. And we're going to run the QMU one again. And what you should now be able to do is write some keys. Oh, look at that. Hello world. And you can see we can delete as well, but it doesn't delete the character. It just moves the cursor back. Testing. I am a programmer. Very cool. Caps work too. So look how awesome that is, guys. Okay. You've now implemented your own little bootloader that can actually, or your boot sector, I should say, where you can actually write characters to the screen with the keyboard. So if you want to learn how to build an entire multitasking operating system that can handle tasks, processes, and all of that amazing stuff, check the video description. You'll learn paging and all sorts of kernel concepts. And there's even a part two course which has been released, which will teach you how to make your own graphical user interface Windows systems on your very own operating system. So yeah, if you're very interested in learning how all of this works, check the video description today, and you'll find the course at a discount. Now. You don't need to know assembly language because you're taught assembly language in the course, okay? But it's all the way at the end in the bonus section. So make sure you check for that if you don't know assembly language. Get the discounts today while the offer's still on.